So hello everyone. Welcome you to our Chongling Kaot Yun Buddhist Art Online Lecture Series today. Our lecture session begins now. Our session today will be recorded and posted on our website. We will also have a Q&A session at the end so you can type your questions in the Q&A box. Today, we are honored to have our CBS assistant professor who is also Tongling Kaot Yun Scholar in Buddhist Art and Culture, Put Chong Hui Cho to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Cho, please. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, attend the lecture today. Uh, may I introduce about the speaker? Professor Osmo Boparachi Bo uh, is the adjunct uh, professor of Central and South Asian Art, Archaeology and Numismatic, University of California, Berkeley, and Emeritus Director of Research of the France National Center for Scientific Research. He's a numismatist, historian, and archaeologist. He has authored 14 books, entitled six books, and published 165 research articles in re reputed international journals. He has read 91 papers at international colloquia, presented 275 conferences in 80 cities, and he has carried out 120 archaeological mission in 24 different countries. Professor Paparacci holds a BA from the University of Colonia and a BA honors and Phil PhD from the Paris I Sorbonne University and a higher doctorate from the Paris I Sorbonne University. He recently published a book on Gandhara art entitled when West Met East, Gandhara Art Revisited. Based on a selection of deserto unknown masterpieces from Gandhara and the Greater Gandhara, dispersed in museum and private collection in Japan, Europe, Canada, and United States of America. So based on today and last lecture, I trust that many of you already observed that there are some of the masterpieces that were the research object by Professor Osmo. So we, we are very happy to have the lecture and conduct the lecture to learn some, something new from Professor. So welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. So once again, I would like to thank uh, um, Professor Chui Xiong-hi uh, of the Center for Buddhist Studies at the University of Hong Kong for inviting me. Uh, for deliver this uh, talk today, because this is the second one. Um, and also, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Miu, project manager, and Lucia Chan, executive assistant of the Center for Buddhist Studies uh, of the University of Hong Kong, who took care of all the logistics with the men's kindness. Um, uh, and also, um, I forgot to thank uh, uh, Sung Puyi uh, for helping me with the uh, technical problems, and I have, I'm sure she will help me also today. So the title um, of this today's talk is Life Story of the Gautama Buddha, uh, Adorning the Kandian Period Murals in Sri Lanka. Um, I would like to dedicate this uh, today's talk to in loving memory of Professor David Stronach, uh, uh, who was at the Center for Middle East Studies, University of California, Berkeley. Uh, for its uh, for his scholarship, friendship, and inspiration, um, he was a very dear friend who inspired me on the uh, on the garden patterns of Sri Lanka and elsewhere. Uh, today's talk is based on two books. The most recent one, which was published last year, uh, "Roots of Sri Lanka Nath," and the other one, seven weeks after the Buddha's enlightenment. Um, and today's talk is also based on a book that I'm writing with one of my Sri Lankan colleagues, uh, Dr. Nadi Shabunwardhan. So um, as an introduction in my today's talk, I wish to discuss the life story of the Gautama Buddha depicted on the murals of the Kandian period temples in Sri Lanka. It was at the beginning of the 18th century during the reign of King Narendra Singha in the middle of the Kandian period that a new era of pictorial art began on the island. King Kirti Rajasinghe was undoubtedly 
the instigator and mastermind of this artistic renaissance in the kingdom of Kandy. However, the Kandyan period must also be appreciated as a period of revival or a renaissance of the long tradition of paintings. From these ancient beginnings was born a Kandyan style with unique characteristics, convention, themes, and techniques. Um, when people talk about Sri Lankan art, the only Sri Lankan painting from ancient times which drew the attention of art historians are those depicted depicting celestial apsaras at the famous sea grier rock complex dated to the 5th century CE. So these are the famous paintings where you can see apsaras emerging from the uh, from the clouds. So Sigiriya is a massive column of rock, uh, nearly 200 meters, 660 feet high. According to the ancient Sri Lankan chronicle, the Chulu answer, the vast complex was built by Kashyapa between 477 and 495. So these are the gardens, geometrical gardens, um, I have worked on with the help of uh, Professor David Stoner. Um, according to John Steele, uh, the whole face of the massive rock appears to have been a gigantic picture gallery, the largest one in the world, covering a surface of 13,500 square meters. Today, the, the, uh, the photographs I showed you, they are only saved here because it's almost like a niche, but the whole facade was painted. So you can imagine how uh, big it was. So these are some of the paintings you know, uh, some uh, throw in uh, flowers, but they all emerge um, uh, from the clouds. And again, with a lot of local flowers that you can see opening a uh, uh, lotus flower. But the, however, the island has a long tradition of paintings, the Wahal Kader or the Aika, the frontispieces, uh, facing four cardinal points, erected um, points, of the stupas and their relic chambers, which date back from the second century CE. So these are the earliest paintings we know of, of Kantapitaitya, uh, which was found almost intact, uh, where you can see some of the paintings of the lions. These are only decorative elements of the frontispiece. And then uh, while uh, the archaeologists were restoring uh, this stupa, which is supposed to be the largest stupa in the world, uh, built in, uh, in the third century, um, uh, they found this painting. And also, even in situ, you can see the whole facade, like in ancient days, they were all painted. You can see the traces of polychrome. And here we have one of the oldest uh, paintings of Kulera. Uh, I'll come to that. And then uh, um, a pond where you can see the swan swimming in the middle of lotus flowers. So here we have a painting of Kuera, which should be dated to the third century uh, with four hands. And if I am not, uh, if I am correct, uh, this is the oldest depiction of four-handed Kuera in the world. And it was uh, found buried um, behind the Eastern Wahal Garden. And also there is a tradition um, in Sri Lanka and elsewhere in the Indian world. I'm sure it was the same. Uh, in, in Gandhara, um, where the relic chambers were painted. Now, this relic chamber, which is in the museum of Nihintari, was found inside this stupa while the archaeologists were restoring it under the directorship of General Parnavitan. So you can see the walls are painted. In the middle, you have a Yupa stone, Exis Mundi. And these are some of the paintings where gods holding flowers, lotuses, uh, venerating the relics. Uh, of the maybe a Narahat, um, uh, whose relics were deposited in the middle. Um, and there is something happening in Sri Lanka everywhere, almost in everywhere. Uh, these are the first dwellings of the monks, and there were no um, there were no paintings or anything at the beginning. They go back to the third century BC because of the epigraphical evidence. Under the drip pitch, there are some um, uh, some inscriptions, but from the 7th and 8th centuries, most of these uh, 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 caves were painted. Here, of course, you can't see anything, but there are other places like here. This is a huge uh, cave, um, and you can still see 
the paintings here you have a deer and also a monk. Um, and again, um, on the ceiling of the upper cave, uh, we have the earliest uh, depiction of a bodhisattva, as you can see here, maybe Siddhartha, well dressed like a prince, and venerated by a woman, Seminyut. And this, this should be dated to the seventh century. The site is called Bonagalve. Um, and um, uh, so that it just means to say that there were many other paintings uh, not known. And uh, I was surprised to see that in, um, in January last year, uh, before the pandemic, I went with my friends. And this uh, place um, in, uh, in Nanigale, the whole facade was painted. Now the painted uh, the painting is gone, but still you can see the traces of the plaster. But the, some of the walls, uh, still there are some paintings. So you can imagine, unfortunately, they are destroyed by the weather being a tropical country, Sri Lanka. And then uh, the Mulagala cave, a dating of these frescoes are subject to the effect. Kumar Swami and Vincent Smith dated the paintings to the 8th century. Uh, Parnavitana ascribed them to the period earlier than the 12th century, but with the likelihood of being contemporary with the Palunnavo period, uh, so most probably the 12th century. But I think Kumar Swami was correct. They should be dated uh, to the 8th century. And then during the Palunnavo period, for example, all the Inside all the temples in Polonaru, they were painted. The best preserved one is in Trivankapilim again, built by King Parakram Bahu of the 12th century. There's a colossal statue of the Buddha, and the paintings are here and everywhere. This is what we call the Devaradhana, invitation of the God. So uh, here we have the descent of the Buddha from the Triatrims of Heaven with Brahma and Mitra with a parasol or a chatra over his head. And here there are two uh, Chula Padma Jataka and the Kemiya Jataka. There are about uh, 30 Jataka stories painted on the wall. These are all of the um, 12th century. And while restoring this ancient stupa in Mahayangana, uh, again, once again, Selvat Parnavitana found inside the relic chamber, the walls were painted with these paintings. Yeah, here you have someone uh, with uh, in Anjali Mudra uh, adoring the Buddha. And here you have a depiction of Vishnu with the conch. And here you have a depiction of Brahma with the uh, water flask. And here, unfortunately, broken under the Bodhi tree, Buddha is seated here. So these are some of the paintings. So when, I, when we come back to the Candian period of the 18th century and um, 19th century, the best book ever written was by Marie Gatubier, a French art historian. It was published in 1991. Unfortunately, she passed away quickly after and she could not continue. So this is her map to give you an idea about the temples dispersed all over the island, not in the north and the east, but especially in the western province and the southern province. So we are not going to look at all these uh, uh, pain, uh, uh, shrines, but I have selected some. The first one is the Dambul Rajamahavihara. The history of this complex dates back to the 3rd century BC, as evidenced by Brahmi inscriptions engraved on the drip letters. These caves were the earliest residences of the Buddhist monks and they were later transformed into shrines. So this is the drip ledge and there are inscriptions here. Paleographically, they can be uh, dated to the third century BC, and there is a name of a king mentioned in one of them. So we are certain this uh, huge complex, this is really, really huge um, complex where the Buddhist monks uh, lived. Only during the Candian period, they were converted into shrines. So the, this is the biggest cave, uh, the ceiling, the walls, and they are all painted, and we'll be discussing them. You can see there are about 120 sculptures of the Buddha made of natural rock, wood, uh, and also bricks and plaster. So these are the 18th century. But in recent years, and also there are some traces of the old paintings going back to the 7th and the 8th centuries. Uh, recently, uh, the Department of Archaeology was restoring some of the paintings, 
and they found under the 18th century layer, these paintings, um, they should go back to the Polonaro period, at least the 12th century. This is the reason why I said uh, Canyon period paintings are a continuation of the old type of paintings in Sri Lanka. Again, another example, uh, Hindugala Vihara built in 1775 by Raja Dilajasinga, but before he did the renovations building this wall, um, there were paintings here. So this is a very famous painting where you can see um, um, the visit of Indra. We will discuss in this uh, during this talk. Uh, Indra are visiting the Buddha at the Indrasara cave. But there are inscriptions here dating to the 6th and 7th centuries. So the art historians believe that these paintings should go back to that period, at least to the 8th century. But these paintings cannot be dated before the 18th century. So the wall was built. And then on the wall, we have these um, uh, depictions. We'll be discussing them. And then there's another one, again, the Galdorwa. Behind there's a rock, and there were the old shelters where the monks lived in the third century BC. Construction of the temple uh, was commenced in 1771 during the reign of Kirti Raja Singha by his younger brother Raja Raja Singha and completed by Raja Raja Singha after he ascended the throne. So here, of course, uh, many of you may know a uh, very famous painting of Vesantara Dataka. Uh, studied um, by uh, uh, Ananda Kumara Swami, but we are not uh, concentrating ourselves to the Jataka stories today, only the life story of the Buddha. So other paintings are inside. And then we have this huge complex called Rajivihara Rigi, complex. Um, the, the walls and the paintings inside, they belong to the 18th century. But as you can see here on the top face, there are other paintings depicting the Buddha twice and the monks, and they, sh they should be dated uh, to the 8th or 9th century. So there is always a continuity of the painting tradition. So if you go inside, these are the paintings you see of the typical Canadian uh, style with the red uh, background. And of course, these are the seven weeks after the enlightenment of the Buddha and the historical monuments. And these are the depictions of the 24 Buddhas of the past. And then I'm also going to Ganga Ram Rajamah Vihara, uh, built by Kirti Sri Raja Singha in the 18th century. Paintings are on the wall. And here is a huge statue, just to give you an idea um, with my colleague here. And you can see how big it is. And the walls are painted uh, with the life story of the Buddha. We'll come to that. And then we go to Totokomo Mirisa Veradalga Samudhigiri Vihara under the patronage of Kinkrichasi Raja Singha, again the 18th century. There is nothing before that period. Temple was built during that period. So we are certain all the paintings that we will be discussing cannot be dated before the 18th century. Same, same way, Kargampite Subodharami Vihara, uh, very close to the capital. Again, uh, we have here the Jataka stories and the Buddhas of the past, and also the life story of the Buddha. And they are much later, they are mainly the, um, the 19th century paintings looking at the 18th century Candian period. So just to give you a uh, summary, I mean, this is also related to the, the talk I gave on the other day about the Gandhari uh, Buddhist art. So when we uh, talk about uh, um, Gautama Buddha, I mean, there are at least three chronological um, uh, hypotheses. One is 563 to 480, the other one is 483 to 400. The Sri Lankan tradition um, goes back to 623. So still there is a dispute about it. Um, at least this is the safest, sixth uh, century and the fifth century BC. Um, when we talk about the life story of the Buddha, there are, uh, mainly two traditions. One is Sanskrit, other one is Pali. And then of course we have Tibetan and Chinese and uh, mainly translations. Uh, as far as the Gandharan art is concerned, the main sources are the Vista. So like the Vista is a Sanskrit Buddhist text of great importance. Apart from being a biography of the Buddha originally of the Sravastavadi school, 
of the Hinayana sect, which was later called and expanded and embellished with the Mahayana ideas, uh, laying emphasis on Buddha's superhuman character and miraculous deed. But when you look at the Gandhara Nath, we see that the Gandhara Nath is followed Larita Vistara more than Buddha Tarita, uh, which was a Kavya written by Yasu Gosha uh, in the first or the second century. And also Mahavastu, uh, which is a very important text, again, a local Theravada school text. And um, the life story of the Buddha is mixed with the other Jataka stories. And then, of course, we have the Tibetan translation of the Murli Sravastavadi Vinaya, where there are very important indications about the life story of the Buddha. And as recent Gandharan manuscripts have shown, most of these texts were inspired by a missing text. And um, it's, I mean, it's absolutely certain the Gandharan artist used those texts which uh, uh, copied uh, in the second century or the third century uh, by the authors of the Lalita Vistara. Then we come to Pali texts. In Sri Lanka, there is no, absolutely no inspiration of Sanskrit texts. Everything is depending on the Pali texts. The main text is Nidhanakatha. Nidhanakatha is an introductory chapter of the Jatakatha Katha, that means Jataka commentary, composed in the fifth century by Buddha Gosha in Sri Lanka. According to the Pali Chronicles, the work is a translation into Pali commentary, originally in Sinhalese. So the Nidhanakatha gives the story of the Buddha in three sections, Dure Nidhanakatha, Abhidure Nidhanakatha, and Santika Nidhana. And also we have to bear in mind during the Kurunagala period, the Pali text was translated into Sinhalese. It is quite possible that the Sinhalese translation was used by the artist of Kandian period when they um, they executed their paintings. So the Nidhanakatha ends with the donation of Jetwanaka to the Buddha and other Pindika. After that, most of the events, this is the reason why most of the Kandian period paintings, there are no events between the, uh, the, the donation of the Jetwanaka by Anatha Pindika to the Buddha until the Mahaparinirvana. Then we have the Buddh, uh, Buddhist birth stories. The, uh, the, this is the uh, translation by these Davids. And then we have Mahabodhi Vamsa. Uh, it's a prose poem composed by Upatis in the reign of Mahindra the Fourth, around uh, the uh, 980 of the common year. Then, of course, the Diga Nikaya, collection of long discourses, is a Buddhist scripture. The first five Nikayas or collections in the Sutta Pitaka, which is one of the three baskets that compose Pali Pitaka of Theravada Buddhism. I'm, I'm sure all of you know about it since you are uh, students and I'm sorry, uh, scholars and students from the uh, Department of Buddhist Studies. The most common refer reference sutta from the Diyuka Nikaya is Mahaparinibbana Sutta, which describes the final days of the Buddha um, the, uh, and the death of the Buddha. So these are the translations and the Pali texts also are there. And then we have Singhala Buddhist texts. So one is the Elubodhi Vansa. It is an amplified singular version of the Pali Mahabodhi Vamsa written uh, circa uh, 1300 by uh, Vilgamula Mahatera, chief monk of Hitsidhavan Kalini Temple, at the request of Pantabha Kamba of Kurunagar. And then we have Amar, Am, uh, Amavatura, written by Guru Lugomi, who lived in the 12th century in Sri Lanka. And then we have Saddam Ratna um, uh, also by Vimala Kiti in the 15th century. Curiously, the single Buddhist texts, and there are many others, they, they, they did not have much of an impact of the Kandian period. Um, uh, it's more or less the Nidhanakatha and the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, which had a great impact on the Kandian period paintings. So when you go to any temple in Sri Lanka, uh, something that you obviously see is what we call the Suvisi Bivarana. Uh, uh, according to the Buddha Vamsa, again a Pali text, uh, part of the Pudukkha which is in part um, uh, turned is a part of the Sutta Pitaka, mentions twenty-eight Buddhas of the past, Gautama Buddha being the last, plus the future Buddha, considered as Buddha Maitreya. And from this source, we thus have the authority for twenty-four birth stories corresponding to the last twenty-four of the 27 previous Buddhas, Maitreya being the 28th, 
a very popular theme of the Cambrian period murals known as Suvisi Vivaran. So, so these are the final Buddhas that normally we see in Indian Nas. So we have seen Sikkim, Vesabu, Krakatandu, Karakamuni, Kachipa, Gautama, and then Maitreya. Um, so here we have, uh, we are going to Lankatrika Vihara, uh, dating back to the 14th century, but the paintings are of the Kandyan period. So we are, uh, what is interesting is there is a legend in Sinhalese, uh, giving the indications of the Buddha who is represented and the uh, reincarnation of Gautama Buddha in the past. So I'll give you a few examples. We are not going to see all of them. Here we have Deepankara Buddha. So as it is said here, um, um, Deepankara, and then we have uh, Meda, that is the Gautama Buddha. So he lived as Meda during the time of Deepankara Buddha. And then here we have um, uh, another incarnation of the uh, Gautama Buddha. And here, Gautama Buddha was born as a snake, a Naga, King Atudo. So the Buddha of the past was Sumana. And then we have Revata. Uh, Gautama Buddha was Vedavas Brahmin, right? And then Sobita, one of the 24 Buddhas, the incarnation of Gautama as Sujata, a Brahmin in Navati. And this is an Anomadisi a Buddha of the past, and the Gautama Buddha was born as a Yaksha king. So you can see Gautama Buddha here. And also Paduma, the Buddha of the past, and Gautama Buddha's reincarnation was a lion. Um, the last two, what is Konagama and then Kashyapa, as you can see here, their names are written here. So uh, this is something that we find everywhere in Sri Lanka, uh, the Suvisi Vivarana or the 24, Buddhas of the past, or also we call them Manushya Buddhas. Um, when you look at Sanchi, for example, um, uh, I mean, the Buddhas of the past are uh, depicted in, um, uh, in many places. Um, so here we have one. Uh, you have seven earthly Buddhas. So you can see Vipassi, Sikki, Vesabha, Kapuchanda, Kanakabuni, Kashyapa, and Shakyamuni. So they are depicted with the stupa or a tree. Um, you know, each Buddha had a tree. So this is what you uh, see in these um, um, uh, you know, in these reliefs in Sanchi. This sculpture will be exhibited in the Berkeley exhibition, which will be starting on April 13th, which is one of the reasonable one. Here we have the Bodhisattva Siddhartha standing. This is from Gandhara, uh, making Abhay Mudra with his right hand and the left in uh, Ankimo the West. And then we have the evolution from Bodhisattva to Buddha. In the middle, we have Buddha preaching, um, uh, most probably Dharma Chakra Mudra, with the other elements that I discussed last time. And then on the base, on the plant, we have the Buddhas of the past. So there are two women venerating them. And here is Maitreya. He's dressed like a prince, and then holding the water flask, Gautama, Kachapa, and other Buddhas that I told you. Uh, in Gandhara and Sanji, uh, there are only seven Buddhas, but in Sri Lanka, there are 24. Um, we were discussing this during the last talk about the importance of the Kanaganhali Stupa, where you can see it was excavated recently, quite recently, 1994 to 92 and 2000 to 2002. And it consists of several structures, the most important being the main Stupa. And these Buddha images of the past were added here. And each Buddha image has an inscription. And it clearly gives the name of the each Buddha. So I'm not going to show you all, but just one. Um, it's, um, so the Buddha is Sikki. So Sikki, here is the inscription. And this is what the legend says. The perfectly enlightened Buddha, Lord Sikki, Sikki was ordered to be made by Visaga, that means Vishaka, from uh, uh, Vagadi, family with his sons. It was made by Nag, uh, Nagabuddhi. So this answers the question that one of you asked me last time, whether the names of the artists or sculptors are mentioned, and this is the best example. All the eight sculptures have the name of the, uh, the sculptor. So here Nagabuddhi is mentioned, I think, three times um, in, um, uh, in Kanaganhali Stupa. 
So we come back to Sri Lanka now. And Sri Lanka, before the story of the Buddha begins, uh, the Suvisi River in there, for the 24 Buddhas are depicted. Here you have Gautam Buddha as a snake and all of them, sometimes with the legend, sometimes without the legend. And then we come to the life story of the Buddha. So if we read Nidhanagata, having just reflected on these five important points, we favored the devas by uh, consenting, quote, the time has arrived, sirs, for me to become a Buddha. He then dismissed them with the words and promises, do you go? And attended by devas of the world, please, that means to Siddhanavan, he entered the grove of gladness uh, in the city of bliss. So what you see here is the Siddhartha, I mean, future Buddha, uh, Bodhisattva is not Siddhartha, Bodhisattva, um, he was seated here, surrounded by the other gods, and they just would say where he is, right, to sit the um, heaven. heaven. Um, and here, uh, again from Damulla, so first he is in the Tusita heaven, um, and I'm not going to read the names of the temples, so you can uh, read them to save time. Um, here, the story goes like this, from left to right, and continues, and then mixed up with the Jataka stories. So the first scene is, they all start with that, uh, Bodhisattva residing in the Tusita heaven, the heaven of the bliss, surrounded by the gods, and the gods are inviting him to descend to the earth. So uh, to read the legend, Divya Brahmana was in Mahabodhisattva and Mahasattva Buddhivimata Aradhana. That means the Brahma is inviting the Bodhisattva to become a Buddha. That means to descend. Uh, I'm not going to read all the legends in the in the future publication. We will do all the transliterations. So again, another temple. Um, uh, Bodhisattva is seated, and um, of course the decoration and everything is very very. Uh, there is huge inspiration, especially in the temples in uh, uh, in the uh, in the coast um, of the British um, the British inspiration. Some of the buildings look like British, and even the decorations and the way they are dressed, almost like Portuguese women. Um, uh, then we come to Rajamahavihara in Dambulla. Uh, Vidhana Katha say on the seventh day, he, she rose early and bathed in perfume water. This incident is only mentioned in Vidhana Katha, not in the Sanskrit text. So in Gandharana, we don't get that. There is no uh, indication of Mahamaya uh, taking the perfume bath. Um, and then, so I mean, I'm just showing, comparing with uh, Indian art or the Indian art. The difference between the Candian, uh, Candian period and also the other period, it's in a way the difference between what is what has been uh, narrated in the Sanskrit text and also in the Pali text. So there is a difference. Then the future Buddha, who had become a superb white elephant and was one, uh, uh, wandering uh, on the golden hill, not far from three, there, descended thence and ascending the silver hill approached her from the north, her means uh, um, I mean his mother, Maya, holding in his uh, silvery tusk a white lotus flower, and uttering a far-reaching cry, he entered the golden mansion and thrice doing obeisance to the mother's couch, he gently struck her right side and seemed to enter her, her womb. So here the story is narrated almost, it really happened. But in the Sanskrit text, it doesn't say it really happened, but it says only that Maya dreamt a white elephant entering her womb. And then um, here is, uh, no, in Sri Lanka, very rarely you see the elephants. You can see uh, Maya uh, uh, taking the rest, I mean, or lying down on a couch um, uh, and dreaming. Um, again, from the other temple, right? Um, but if you compare this, for example, here we have a bird scene from Gandhar. So I read from Larita Vistara, monks at that time, Sakra, that means uh, uh, Lord of the Gods, that means Indra, and Brahma, the creator, Lord of the Fearless Realm, appeared before the Bodhisattva. As they remembered and recognized who he was, they were full of veneration for Bodhisattva and left him up in divine sin. So in Gandharan art, the, there was no problem of showing 
that Bodhisattva was born by the side uh, of the um, uh, of Mahamaya. So you can see Bodhisattva emerging from here, and Indra receiving the baby, and Brahma holding the water flask behind. Uh, so it, it follows the narration in uh, in Larita Vistara, in Gandhara. But if you read Vidharakata, what it says is, stretching out her hand, she took hold of the branch, and then karma-born winds shook her. The people drawing the curtain round her. So this is what happened. So you don't see the baby. Uh, retired standing and holding the branch of the sultry, she was delivered. From the hands of the Brahmas who received him in the golden net, the four kings, that means uh, Lokaparas or the guardian uh, kings of the four directions, received him on the cloth of an antelope skin, soft to touch, such as uh, are used on occasions of royal state. Uh, when uh, wherever the Bodhisattva took a step, a lotus sprouted forth. Next, he took seven steps forward the west, and pausing on the seventh step, he proclaimed these satisfying words in a lion like fashion I am the supreme being on this earth. This is my pronounced birth, where I shall uproot birth, old age, sickness, and death. So let's see how it is depicted. Now, in Kandyan period, you don't see the baby. So there is a curtain in all the paintings because, as Vidalakata says, um, uh, people drew a curtain, and this is what you see comp in comparison with Gandhara Nath, where you can see the prince coming out from the womb of the mother. And here again, the people drawing a curtain around there, right? So the baby was delivered. So you can see only the head of Maya. And of course, the other. The Brahma and Indra received the baby. Baby was passed to the uh, to the paradise or to the heaven. So the four Lokapalas received the baby, and the baby comes back. So the Bodhisattva comes back to the earth. Um, uh, so after that, uh, according to Nidhanakatha, and as he walked, and here he is walking on the lotus flowers. Great Brahma held over him a white temple. So you can see Brahma holding a white temple. So this is, these things are not found in Gandhara Nath or any form of Indian Buddhist art. Again, in Karagampite, you can see the curtain ribbon and the baby will be received by, by Indra and Brahma. And here you can see Brahma holding the white, white uh, parasol or the umbrella or the chatra and the prince or the bodhisattva walking, uh, walking on the uh, lotus flowers. And then the, uh, this is my last word saying this, the, uh, the guide of men, smile. Sakra and the world protectors felt strong faith and bathed the benefactor of the world with the finest scented water. The Naga kings too followed suit, bathing his body with streams of uh, scented water. Now this you can see in, so here we are, uh, Indra and Brahma pouring hot and cold water, water on the head of the prince or the bodhisattva. This is in Sanskrit tradition. This you won't find in Sri Lanka because it's not mentioned in Nidhanakata. So there's something that which is not depicted anywhere in any form of art. So Lalita Vistara says, months, seven days after the bodhisattva was born, the time came for Maya Devi to pass away. Upon her death, she was born among the gods in the heaven of 33. Nidhanakata has a similar story. But as the womb in which a future Buddha has dwelt, like sacred relic shrine, can never be occupied by another, the mother of the Bodhisattva, uh, uh, Bodhisattva, seven days after his birth, died and was born in the city of bliss. The, uh, I mean, here, of course, it says in the city of bliss, to Sita heaven, but in the Sanskrit text, she was born in the Triathim heaven, the heaven of Indra. We will come to that. So this scene is not depicted anywhere in Buddhist art. Another scene. Uh, this is the presentation of uh, um, of the Buddha to Sakyavartana, uh, a yaksha uh, by Mahaprajapati, by his time Maya is there. Um, he is represented by symbol, the footprints. Uh, this is only mentioned is Muli Sravasava Divinya. Is completely missing from the Pali and the Sanskrit tradition. So it is not depicted in Gandharan art or in, uh, uh, in Sri Lankan art. 
but only in Anbat here uh, from um, uh, Amaravati, the slab is in the now in the British Museum. At that time, the great Saj Asita, so this is from the Sanskrit text, who had a five extraordinary powers, was residing on the slopes of Himavat, Himalaya, the king of mountains, together with his sister's son, Naradatta. When the Bodhisattva was born, he saw many amazing uh, miraculous displays. So he, so he came with the uh, with his devil, and then Suddhodana, he said, I want to see the child. So the child, he looked at the child and saw the 30, um, I mean, Mahapurusha Lakshana, uh, 32, 32 signs of, an, of a great being. And he said he will one day be either a Chakravartin or a Bodhisattva. Now, the depiction in uh, Nidhava, the, the narration in Dhanakata is a little bit different. Uh, instead of Pasita, we have Kala Devana, and he's, he was residing in the heaven, a confidential uh, advice of Suddhodana, the king, who had passed through the eight stages of religious attainment, um, uh, had eaten his middle, uh, midday uh, meal and had gone to Thayatim Sabal for his middle uh, rest. So then he comes and then he uh, examines the child. So that you can see in all the Kandyan period paintings. First, you have the child in a fan. This is the fan of the British period. And uh, the child is here. Then Suddhodana brings the child and he is dressed like an ascetic. And then he predicts that he will be either a, 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 a Chakravarti or a Buddha, so universal king or the enlightened one. Uh, another important thing um, in both texts, I mean, in Nidhanakata and also in Narita Vistara, um, now one day the king held the so called flower festival. The king lived in his house with great retinue, took his son, and went to the spot. There, there was a jambu tree, thick with leaves and giving a dense shade. Under it, the Raja had the child's couch laid out and over the couch a canopy spread inlaid with stars of gold and round it a curtain, curtain hung. Then leaving uh, a guard there, the Raja, in the king, clad in splendor and attended by ministers, went away to plow. So here you can see uh, um, uh, the king is plowing. And here again, the king is plowing. And this is the place where, the, where Siddhartha was. And he was under the jambu tree. Here you have rose apple tree, which was not a tree originally from India or Sri Lanka, which is a South, uh, Southeast Asian tree. So there's a dispute when it's called jambu, whether it's really this jambu or the jackfu tree. But anyway, I don't want to enter into that um, discussion. But if you read the articles by um, Michael, um, uh, Michael Meister, you will see his arguments. So future Buddha looking all round and seeing no one got up quickly, seated himself cross legged and holding his breath, sank into the first jhana. So he started meditating inside this. And the, the shade of the jambu tree didn't move. All the other shades of the trees moved. So see, I mean, the painter made a choice. Instead of showing the child inside, he uh, painted the child, the, or the future Buddha, up in the air. So the king is venerating him. So this is quite different from, uh, and I will show you another painting here, uh, from Karagam uh, This is quite different from what we learned from uh, Buddha Charita, Larita Vistara, and all the other Sanskrit texts. For example, I'm reading the translation by, translation by Patrick Corrigan in the Buddha Charita. Seeing the men plowing the fields, their bodies discolored, by the wind, the dust, and the scorching rays of the sun, oxen weird by the toil of pulling the plows, great compassion over him, the great noble man. The grievous caused by the clumps of grass dug up by the plow, littering the earth, covering it with tiny dead creatures, insects, and worms. So this is what we see. Then he sees the first time the um, uh, impermanence of life. Now, this is depicted in Gandharana, and it is not depicted in Sri Lanka now because it is not in Nidharagata in this way. So you can see Buddha, he's no more a, a child of 12 years old, according to Lalita Vista. It's almost like a presented like a young man in place with clothes under a tree, which is not a jambu tree that we know of. And under that, we can see a man plowing the fields. And again, here and here, he, uh, of course, he 
Bodhisattva, the future Buddha, start meditating. So there is a fundamental difference between the Sanskrit and the Pali text. And then we have the Nidhanakata, but the Bodhisattva is still forced grew to manhood. And the king had three mansions made suitable for three seasons. The one story, uh, the one nine stories high, one seven stories high, one five stories high. And he provided him with 40,000 dancing girls. So the Bodhisattva, surrounded by wealthless dancing girls, like they were surrounded by troops of nuns and attended by musical instruments, which played of themselves, lived as the seasons changed in each of these mansions in enjoyment of great prosperity. And the mother of Rahul uh, was his principal queen. Uh, normally in Sanskrit text, the wife of Siddhartha is called Yashodara. In uh, Pali text, he is very often called mother of Rahula, Rahula Mata. So here we have, uh, of course, the, the context of archery and then the wedding party uh, of between Suddhodana and uh, Yashodara. Uh, again, another one. So that, as it says, Siddhartha Gumurge Sardamangal Nuyana. So that means the, the, uh, the wedding ceremony of Siddhartha and at the same time, uh, coronation, automatically name. So this is how the palaces are depicted in Sri Lankan paintings. But in contrast, here you can see in Gandharana, the wedding between uh, Siddhartha and Yashodara was almost a Hindu ceremony. You have Agni, the fire. Uh, so it's, a, it's almost, a, I mean, he's not in Buddha, but he's born as a Hindu. So they follow a Hindu ceremony. This is how you see it in, in Gandharana in Sri Lanka. Where yeah, you have, they are almost dressed like, uh, I mean, half Sri Lankan, half European, and the buildings are almost European, but they have a different wedding ceremony. So, this is the uh, turning point of Buddha's life. Now, one day, the future Buddha wanted to go to his pleasure ground, told his chariot uh, to harness the, his chariot. The devas, the gods, thought the time for young Siddhartha to attain enlightenment is near. Let us show him the omens. And they did so by making the son of the devas represent a man wasted by age, with decayed teeth and gray hair, bent and broken down in body, uh, and with stick in his hand, but he was only visible to the future Buddha and the chariot. Again one day, when the future Buddha, as he was going to his special crown, saw a sick man, represented by the devas, he made the same inquiries as before. Once more, when the future Buddha, as he was going to his pleasure ground, saw a dead man represented by the gods, he made the same inquiry. So he asked every time, who is he? What has happened to him? So every time the charity is said, um, you know, we, I mean, when we go old, we, I mean, we, we, we become old and we become sick. And also, um, um, and then, um, and we die one day. So once again, when the future Buddha, as he was going to his flesh ground, saw one who had abandoned the world carefully and decently uh, clad, he asked the character. So this is an ascetic um, or a recluse uh, or a mendicant. So th these are the four encounters uh, which made the Bodhisattva to realize the impermanence of life that we won't remain our, through our whole life as, as young. So here is the moment that he is asking the charioteer. So he gets into the chariot and he goes. First, he sees a sick man, right? Um, so this is the chariot. Uh, in, uh, normally in Kandyan period, uh, he is in the chariot. But in uh, Gandhar and Buddhist art, sometimes he goes walking and sometimes he's on an elephant, sometimes he's on, an ho uh, on a horseback. So here you see the old um, uh, old man and then a sick man um, here and then a dead man right and finally a mendicant a recluse almost dressed like a buddhist monk and again another temple you can see a sick man i mean uh, suffering from leprosy and here you have a, a old man with a stick and then people carrying a dead body right and he's inquiring what has happened to you. 
and then at the end, this is a recluse, a, bod uh, a bodhisattva. Now, uh, here uh, it is from the Damulla temple. You can see all one, two, three, four, and five. Sorry, one, two, three, four, four omens. Uh, but if you compare this with the Gandhara Nath, uh, of course, the four omens are the same. That means you have the, here is the best one. Um, you have a sick man, old man, and a dead body, and the monk, right? Um, and then, at that day, the future Buddha, cherishing the, uh, the thought of renouncing the world, went to his pleasure ground. There he enjoyed himself during the day and bathed in the beautiful lake. And at sunset, seated himself on the royal resting stone to be robed. Now his attendants brought robes of different colors and various kinds of ornaments and garlands and perfumes and ointments and stood around him. So you can see, instead of showing a huge lake, you have almost something like a tank, but he's taking a bath. And then he was robed uh, with the crown and beautiful things, and he goes to the palace. And here is from the uh, Samudragiri Vihara. Unfortunately, the paintings have suffered a lot. Um, and then we have the birth of Rahula. Uh, Siddhartha spent 29 years as a prince in Kapilavastu. Rahula was the only son of the Buddha Siddhartha Gautam. According to the Pali tradition, Rahula was born on the day of Prince Siddhartha's renunciation. So this is in Nidhanakata. According to the Moolis Ravastava Divinia, however, Rahula was only conceived on the day of Prince Siddhartha's renunciation and was born six years later when Prince Siddhartha became um, enlightened as a Buddha. So there is, there is a huge difference. According to the Nidhana Katha, uh, Rahula was born on the uh, uh, day that he left the palace. Um, but in uh, Moolis Ravastava Divinia, he was not born until. I mean, he was in the uh, womb of uh, uh, Bodhisattva's wife, uh, Yashodara, uh, for, uh, for six years. So at that time, Suddhodana King, who heard that mother of Rahula had brought forth a son, sent a message saying, message saying, make known my joy to my son, the future Buddha. Hearing this said, an impediment has come into being, a bond has come into being. When the king asked, what did my son say? and heard that saying, he gave command. From henceforth, let Rahula impediment uh, be my grandson's name. So here you have very clearly in, in Pali, Rahujato Bandhanantat Diyaha. So that means this is an impediment and this is a bondage. So this is the reason why um, uh, the son of uh, future Buddha was called Rahula. Now after Bodhisattva, or Bodhisattva had Sent Chandler on his errand, he thought, I will just look at my son. And rising from his cross leg sitting, he went to the apartments of Rahula's mother and opened her chamber door. At that moment, a lamp fed with sweet smelling oil was burning dimly in the inner chamber. The mother of Rahula was asleep on the bed, uh, strewn with many jasmine flowers, and resting her hand on the head of his son, uh, sto uh, son, stopping with his foot on the threshold, the Bodhisattva thought, if I lift her hand and to take my son, she will awake and that will prevent my going away. I will come back and see him when I have been a Buddha. And then he left the palace. So this is what you see in the Pali text, Nidhanakata. Huh? But in the Sanskrit text, there is no question of Bhavala. So we will see how this is uh, shown. Here you have the Buddha in meditation, thinking of uh, renouncing the worldly life. And here you have the dancers who were dancing throughout the day and night. And now they are, uh, they are sleeping because they were tired. And here you can see Bodhisattva coming and seeing his child. Here is the child. And here is um, his wife, um, um, uh, Yashodara. You can see again in this one. So he's just. I mean, he doesn't go inside normally. Here is the baby, his son. Uh, same thing here from Damuni Temple, just after the four encounters. So he enters and sees the child, and you can see here. 
So when, uh, according to Lalita Vistara, when the Bodhisattva looked at the entire retinue of women, he saw that some had garments that had slipped off, some had disheveled hair, and some had their jewelry in disarray. Others had lost their head ornaments, some had ugly shoulders, while some had uncovered arms and legs. Some had repulsive expressions, while the eyes of others were crossed. Some were drooling, and some others were snoring. Some were laughing widely, and some were coughing, and others were petting incoherently. So, as you can see here, there is no child, because the Lalita Vistara does not say so. What you see here, all these women now sleeping in Lalita postures, um, and people peeping through the, through the curtains and looking what is happening um, in Gandharana. And again, another one, this will be exhibited as well in Berkeley, where you can see Siddhartha taking his decision. He is sit, he's sitting on a bed almost like a Greek bed. And here you have his wife, Yashodara, and no child. And here you have Channa bringing his clothes, and they are all sleeping. Even the woman, the guardian woman, is sleeping. Um, uh, standing. So this is what you find in Gandharana in Sanskrit text, and the rest is different in Pali text. The Siddhartha uh, leaves the palace as the father, and in Pali, Sanskrit text, he is not yet a father. He doesn't know a child is conceived. And then, um, of course, uh, the, the great departure, or what we call the Mahavinish criminal, he, Bodhisattva, thought. If the door does not open, sitting on Kantaka's back with Channa holding his tail, I will press Kantaka with my thighs and jumping over the city rampart, 18 cubits high, I will get away. But the Deva residing at the gate opened it. So there is something a uh, little bizarre about the text here. Uh, the, the text says the gods opened the door, but um, Buddha Gosha says, but the, um, I mean, uh, this is what he adds. But I am sure this was added by Buddha Gosha in the commentary. But in all the Kandyan periods, the horse flies. So you can see here very clearly. Uh, so here is the horse. And Chanda has to hang on to the tail. In Gandharana, he was walking with the Bodhisattva. Here he is hanging to hang on to the chain. chain and the horse cross over the Nevanjana and Nanoma rivers, as you can see. So horse is flying. So this, this will, you will never find in Gandharana. So what you uh, find in Gandharana is this. When the Bodhisattva rose from his seat, the earth shook in six ways. He mounted the supreme king of horses that resembled the full moon. Then the guards and the guardians with their pure lotus-like hands then lifted up the supreme horse, Sakra and Brahma, went in front, showing the way. So, in Sanskrit tradition, and also Gandharana, which followed the Sanskrit tradition, the Buddha, uh, the future Buddha, or the Bodhisattva, was seated on his horse, Kantaka, and gods carried the horse. And because uh, Suddhodana, Bodhisattva's father, uh, put thousands of guards to and not to let his son leave the palace. So there is a, a huge difference between the Sanskrit and the Pali text. So in the Pali text, Buddha flies and the horse flies. And in Gandharana, the horse is carried by the gods. So this is again a basic difference. So here we have in Nagarjuna Koda, which follows the, the Sanskrit tradition. And the, you can see the Naga kings and even the gods, they carry the horse. Here, at that moment, Mara came there with the intention of stopping the Bodhisattva. Uh, and standing in the air, he exclaimed, Go not forth, sir. In seven days from now, the treasure wheel will appear and will make you uh, sovereign over four continents and the 2,000 uh, uh, eyes. Stop, my lord. Who are you? said he, I am Vasati, Vasati is um, um, uh, Vasavati, uh, Mara, was the reply. Well, do I know that the treasure wheel, um, well, do I know that the treasure wheel would appear to me, but it is not sovereign to that I desire. I shall become a Buddha and make the 10,000 world system should 
uh, shout for joy. So here you can see the conversation between uh, Bodhisattva and the Mara uh, uh, Vasavati uh, here, right? And then they continue, as you can see, he flies over an Oma river, and you can see Chanda holding onto the tail. So this is much more clear, um, uh, the, the flight. And then advancing in this pomp and glory, the Bodhisattva in that one night, passed beyond three kingdoms and arrived at the end of the 30 leagues at the bank of the river called Anoma. Uh, the Bodhisattva, getting down from the horse back, stood on the sandy beach, extending there like a sheet of silver, and said to Channu, good Channu, do thou now go back, take in my ornaments and comfort it. I am going to leave the world. So this is what you see here. Uh, Siddhartha giving orders to Channa and also to Kantaka, who was very sad and proceed died after, um, um, to go back to the palace. Same thing here. Then he thought, these locks of mine, I'm referring to the hair, are not suit, uh, suited for a recluse. Now it is not right, right for anyone else to cut the hair of a future Buddha. So I will cut them off myself with this sword. Then taking his sword in his right hand and holding the plate of treasures together with the diadem on them, with his left, he cut them off. So his hair was thus reduced to two inches in length and curling from the right. It lay close to his head. It remained that length as long as he lived and the beard the same. There was no need or, uh, at all to shave either hair or beard anymore. So this is what Vidana Katha say. This is the moment he's cutting the hair. And you can see uh, the gods were recovering the hair. You can see the hair is going in between the clouds and they took the hair and they, uh, they started venerating his hair. So if you, so the most of the sculptures follow this description when they treat the head of the, the hair or the locks of the Buddha like snails. Right? So his uh, hair was thus reduced to two inches in length and curling from right in lay close to his head. So Bodhisattva said to him, saying, I am to become a Buddha. Let it stand in the air. If not, let it fall on the ground. So referring to the hair. Trip the hair and diadem together as he held them towards the sky. The plated hair and the jewel turban went a leak off and stopped in the air. Sakka, Sakka means Indra, the Deva King caught the sight of it with his Deva eye, the God eye, and received it into a jewel casket and league high he placed it in Tavatimsa, that means Tristhimsa, that is the heaven of Indra and in the Dagaba of the Daiva. So, uh, so they were recovered, so they are still venerated in the Tavatimsa heaven. This my uh, uh, payment of Benares Muslim. Um, is not suitable for recluse. Now, the great Brahma, who had formerly been his friend in the time of Kashyapa Buddha, was led by his friendship, which he had not grown old that long interval to think. Today, my friend is accomplishing uh, the great relaxation. I will go and provide him with um, uh, I mean, the necessities of a recluse, three robes, the arm ball, razor, needle, and girdle and water strainer. These eight are the wealth of the monk uh, of uh, the monk devout. So here we can see this is what we call in Sinhalese atapirikara. So eight items. So they were given by Brahma to the Buddha. So you can see that here. That you don't see in uh, Gandharana. Here you have the same. So things are given to him. Um, and then again, the Bodhisattva considered if I am to be a monk, it would be, uh, it, it would not be right to wear silken garments. So this is in Lalita itself. So it would be good if I could uh, find some clothes suitable for living in the forest. So what he uh, um, thought was, um, it's better for me to exchange my clothes. At that moment, the gods, one of the gods appeared as a, a huntsman or, uh, and, uh, or hunter and appeared in front of him. And here is the Bodhisattva. He gave his silken clothes, and the uh, the hunter gave his clothes. So this is what you see in Gandharana, 
and this is the moment that Kantaka believes we are with to Chandra, uh, sorry, uh, with Chandra to the Buddha, and Buddha is holding his jewelry and giving to Chandra. And again, here you can see the exchange of clothes. Um, uh, future Buddha, Bodhisattva, giving the silken clothes to the hunter, hunter giving his saffron clothes to the Buddha to uh, let us know that he is a hunter. You have a deer uh, killed by him, killed by the hunter. And then Vajrapani behind, young Vajrapani and the old Vajrapani. So, but the Bodhisattva, having renounced the world, spent seven days in the mango grove, called Anupya, heard by that spot in the joy of renunciation. Then he went on the foot in one day to Raj, uh, Rajagaha, a distance of 30 leagues, and entering the city, begged for his food, uh, food from the donor door. So he goes and he was sitting, and he was going from house to house, begging for food. Now he's a recluse. And then the news came to the king of uh, having uh, hearing that his message. The king quickly left the city and approaching the Bodhisattva, was so pleased at the mere sight of his dignity and grace. Then he offered him all the kingdom. So Buddha, uh, future Buddha refused. I said, if I want a kingdom, I stay. I would have stayed in Kapilavastu. But then the, the king venerated him and went, went away and said, if you, when you become Buddha, please come and see me. So at the Bodhisattva granting the king request, went forward on his way and going himself to Alara, Kalama, and Uddhaka, son of Rama, he acquired their systems of ascetic trance. So he was, this is the moment of his consulting the ascetics, which is also in the, uh, in the Sanskrit text, almost the same name. But when he saw that it, that was not the way to enlightenment, he left off applying himself to the realization of that system of attainment and with the intention of carrying out the great struggle against sin and showing his uh, might and resolution to devas and men, he went to Uruvenu and uh, the place. So here you can see he's discussing with, um, um, he of course, the five mendicants and with the others about how to get rid of the anitya uh, or the circle of rebirths. And in Gandharanath, uh, uh, it's quite, I mean, uh, beautifully represented uh, in Buddha Tarita, but a certain tall Brahmin among them used to lie on ash, wearing top knot, with reddish eyes, wearing a dark uh, bark garment, um, garment with thin long nose and water foot. So it's almost the same depiction here, that here you have Bodhisattva um, uh, conversing with the old, uh, old uh, Brahmin. Now Buddha thought, I will perform the utter penance, and he brought himself to live on one seed of the oil plant or one grain of rice, and even to pass entirely. But they was gathered to sap of life and infused uh, into him uh, through the pores of his skin. By this fasting, however, he became as thin as a skeleton. The color of his body once fair as gold became dark, and the third two signs of the great man so that is Mahapurusha Lakshana, um, a man disappeared. And one day, when walking up and down, plunged into instant meditation, he was overcome by severe pain and he fainted. So uh, we never see in Kandyan painting the Buddha fasting like in Gandharana. You don't see the skeleton of the Buddha. But what you see here is this one, that he is um, fainting and, and how he fell down is this moment goes and course, went to Suddhodhana and said, Buddha, your son is dead. And the Suddhodhana said, no, my son is never dead. Die before he becomes a Buddha. And then when the gods came back, they saw the Buddha is alive. So again, here you have his uh, fasting here, and then he collapses. So I showed you this already last time. So it uh, in Gandharanath, it follows what he said in the Rikaristara. That means he has almost become a skeleton. And also, uh, uh, the one which was hitherto considered as the most evocative is the Lahore Museum in Pakistan. It was found in Sikri and it was dark patina, reminds us of the period when Buddha assumes that the form of beautiful and delicate complexion has disappeared and the people who dwelt in the neighbor village thought, oh, truly, he is black. Sramana Gautama, uh, truly, Sramana Gautama is the color of the Madhura fish. 
I don't know how many of you have seen this fish, Bagura, is really dark. So the patina of the sculpture is also dark. Now, of course, after six years, Buddha gave up um, uh, the fasting, and then, of course, Sujata um, um, prepared the milk. Uh, it's a milk cake or rice a milk uh, cake, um, and went to see the Buddha and offered it. So this you see in Pali text and also in Sanskrit text. Again, here you can see Sujata Vikirbuddhi Pujakara. Uh, Pujakara. Uh, so here you have Sujata bringing in the food. Again, another one where you can see she's preparing the rice cake uh, and then she's coming uh, with the food. And then, but when he had finished eating the milk rice, he took the golden vessel and said, You shall be able to uh, today to become a Buddha, let this pot go up the stream. If not, let it go downstream. Of course, it went up the stream against the current and it was uh, taken by another king. So this is what you see here. And again, in Dhammul Temple, you can see the, the patra or the bowl going upstream. And then, but the Bodhisattva spent the heat of the day in the grove and sultry uh, in full blown on the bank of the river. And in the evening, uh, when the flowers dropped from the, the stem, he proclaimed like Lion King, uh, uh, roused towards the tree of enlightenment. So he went to the Bodhi tree and sat there. And on his way, uh, Sotya, the grass cutter, offered him grass. So he prepared his throne and he started the meditation. Um, and you can see here, um, the, turning his black upon the uh, back on upon the trunk of the Bodhi tree, with his face towards the east, made the firm resolve. My may skin indeed and snooze and bones wilt away, may flesh and blood in my body dry up, but, st I will, but till I attain complete enlightenment, this seed I will not leave. So this is what happened. So at this moment, uh, the Deva Mara, thinking Prince Siddhartha wants to free himself from my dominion, I will not let him go free yet. So went to the host of the Maras and told the news and sounding the drum called Mara City, he led for the host of Mara. So this is what we call the attack of Mara. Um, uh, so the, the, the army was coming and the gods, even the gods got frightened and they left Buddha alone to face the Mara. As I told on the other day, so here you have the, the life story of the Buddha in Dhamulda and here you have the Mara's attack and then the seven weeks of the enlightenment. So here is the beautiful uh, painting on the ceiling on the rock face of Dumbledore, where you can see the Mara Deva mounted on his elephant, 250 leagues high, uh, girded with mountains, and created himself thousand arms. So in Pali text, it's very clear Mara was on elephant back. In Sanskrit text, it never says he was on elephant back. So in Gandhara Nath, you have Mara normally standing on foot, and very rarely on horse, but here in the Pali text, he's on the, um, uh, on the back of the, this huge elephant with six tusks and three trunks and with all the snakes. And then seeing that uh, the past lights of the Buddha, uh, the elephant, um, uh, Girimekala, bowed down, making his master to collapse ungracefully. So you can see his crown is fallen and he had, so he had to accept uh, the defeat. It's very interesting when you compare the Mara's attack from the other Indian forms of art like, uh, um, like uh, Gandhara or Andhra Pradesh, uh, there are a lot of snakes, everywhere snakes. You don't see snakes very rarely in Gandhara. Now. So in a tropical country like Sri Lanka, snakes are deadly enemies of humans. Even today, annual snake bite incidence in Sri Lanka is about 400 per 100,000 people, corresponding to 80,000 snake bites per year. So the cobras and the vipers are the deadly enemies. So they use those to, uh, to attack the Buddha. I mean, at one point, Nara say, go and kill him. So they come with all these weapons. As I told on the other day, the weapon used by the demoniac sons of Mara differ according to their geographical and chronological context. In this scene, the detail of a soldier pointing a gun at the Buddha mirrors the deadliest weapon used by colonial powers 
of course, this is on the British period, in this period of, to dominate their subjects. So here you have a man um, uh, holding a gun. As you know, you will never see a gun in Gandhara Nadu because gun was not invented at that time. And here again, a painting, you have two soldiers with two guns uh, aimed at the Bodhisattva. So I showed these slides last time, just to show you, Mara is not on elephant back, and he's wearing uh, the catapactus or the heavy armor over the dhoti. And here you have the defeated army, they look like big soldiers, and these soldiers are almost like Scythians and Greeks. So uh, the context differs from one place to the other. So in Sri Lanka, the worst enemies were the British uh, who, were, who have colonized the country. And at the same time, the snake, I mean, uh, caused for many, uh, many deaths in the country. And again, a beautiful fresco on the ceiling of Hindagala Vihara. There you can see Buddha seated on the, in the middle and Mara coming victoriously and his defeat. And here you can see, um, uh, well equipped with arms, he comes on his, uh, um, uh, uh, elephant, and then here are the here are some arms used by his army, and this is from Gangarama Vihara. Uh, it shows how the gods, including Brahma, they ran away when they saw the Mara's army. So Mara comes on this elephant. They throw all these weapons, but they don't even go close to the Buddha. They all they were all dropped, or they they come back to them. So here is the arrival of the Mara's army. And this is a defeat of the Mara's army. You can see how dreadful it is, the way that he, uh, I mean, that he, way he was defeated. So this is quite different from what we see in Gandharanath. For example, in Gandharanath, you see women, the three daughters of Mara, uh, trying to distract the Buddha. But in Sri Lanka, in Kandyan painting, you never see a woman during the main, uh, main attack of the Mara. You see them later. And same thing I showed you in Andhra Pradesh, it is more or less a psychological fight. Uh, Mara is uh, shown as Kama, the god of desire in Hindu iconography uh, with his sugarcane bow and the, and the arrow, uh, flowering arrow. But uh, in Sri Lanka, it's always a deadly attack, a physical attack uh, against Mara with all the weapons um, um, uh, thrown against the Buddha. So after the Mara's attack, Buddha stayed for 49 days around the or vicinity of the Bodhi tree without eating, fasting, uh, enjoying the bliss of his discovery, how he found a way to, um, uh, to defeat the, the old age, sick age, and death. So this is something that you see in Sri Lanka very often. I have written a book about this. There is the huge... Uh, controversy in Larita Vizcarra, uh, uh, the, all the seven weeks are mixed up everywhere. So because of this problem, in Kandara Nath, you never see the seven weeks. There are only few episodes here and there. But um, so for example, here, uh, you have the Mara's attack and the last week. There are no other weeks depicted because of the confusion made by Larita Vizcarra, because there is a contradiction. And if you look at the Mahavastu, which is a Sanskrit text, which has seven weeks, but the Gandhara Nathis do not follow this system. But Nidhanakata is actually followed by not only Sri Lankan Nathis and also in Burma and Thai. Only uh, the difference is uh, instead of the fifth week, I mean, in Nidhanakata, sorry, in Mahavastu, it becomes the sixth week and the weeks were uh, uh, changed. But when you look at the um, uh, the history of seven weeks in Sri Lanka, I published this um, um, this relief, which was found accidentally in a monastery, and this is the oldest uh, uh, depiction of the seven weeks of the Buddha. So you can see uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seven weeks, and this is the oldest. As I told you in Gandharana, you don't find. The most beautiful one is in Damula Vihara. All the seven weeks are depicted. So you have the first week, blessed one sat motionless for seven days, realizing the bliss of Nirvana. And then uh, the, uh, during the second day, um, he was looking, uh, watching the Bodhi tree and the Bodhi Manda for with unwinking eyes for one week. And then you have the third week, 
that uh, he created a, a treasure cloister and he was working up and down for one week. And then on the fourth week, God created a treasure house and he sat there happily and meditated for, uh, for, um, for one week uh, every time there is a legend in Singhala. And then on the fifth week, which is a more interesting one, having just spent four weeks close to the Bodhi tree, he went to the fifth tree to the shepherd's wing of the tree and sat there meditating on doctrine and experiencing the happiness of deliverance. And at that moment, uh, Mara's daughters come back. They saw their father writing on the ground with a lot of sadness, with sorrow. And they asked him, Why are you, what are you doing? He said, I could not defeat this person. And he, I mean, he was the victor, and he achieved the the right way and the enlightenment. So the Mara's daughter said, "Don't worry, we will go and distract him." So they come back and they start dancing. Uh, so uh, say they multiply themselves, saying that, you know, I mean, because Buddha was not looking at them, so they, the daughters of Mara considered with themselves, various are men's states. Some fall in love with girls, some with young men, some with mature women, some with older women. We will tempt him in various forms. So each of them assumed the appearance of a hundred women girls, women who had ever had a child, or, or only once, only twice, middle-aged women, older women, six times they went up to the desert. And so this is what you see here, that you will never say in Gandhara Nath, the, the coming of the girls, uh, the three, uh, three, uh, three daughters. And uh, so now some teachers say that when the Blessed One saw them approaching in the form of elderly women, he commanded saying that let these women remain just as they are with broken teeth and bold uh, heads. Again, Buddha Gosha put a comment and said, Blessed One never did that. But in Candian and Burmese paintings, you can see the young women and with the curse of the Buddha, they become old women. They remain. But of course, the, uh, the three daughters come, they come back to Buddha and ask for the Tudarita Vistara, and Buddha restored their youth again. So these are some of the paintings in Sri Lanka, I mean, in, the, in different shrines, where you can see the daughters of Mara dancing. And if you go to Burmese paintings, which were published by Donald Stadner, you can see you can they are very young women, and they become old without their teeth and they run away. And here is the same, young and old. So this is something that you see in the Pali tradition, uh, which is in Sri Lanka and which is also in Kagan and many other Burmese paintings. Um, and then uh, we come to the sixth week. So this is the moment that Muchalinda uh, protected him from the, from the storm uh, and rain. And then we come to the seventh week, he went away to the Kinsler tree and then uh, they are also sat down. So this is the last week according to the, um, uh, according to the uh, Nidhankata. Now, as Lai sat there on the last days of seven weeks, the 49th day, he felt a desire to bathe his face. And Sakka, the Deva governor, brought a fruit of the meribolent tree and gave him to eat. And Sakka, that's Indra, too, provided the tooth cleanser. cleanser. I mean, the tooth uh, uh, toothbrush uh, of the thorns of a snake creeper and water to bathe his face. And the master used the tooth cleanser and bathed his face and sat, him, uh, sat down there at the foot of the crystal tree. This is what you see. here. He brings water and he brings the, uh, the uh, tooth cleaning twigs. And here it is very clear from the um, uh, Kargampitiya temple. So you have the first, second, third, fourth, and the fifth. And then the sixth week, here yeah, fifth week and the sixth week, and then uh, Tapasubha Luka bringing the meal. And here it's very clear, Sakka comes with the um, tooth cleanser. And Buddha goes to the lake and brushes his teeth. And only then he ate. So this is what you see, one of, um, this is the earliest, one of the earliest examples of use of toothbrush uh, in the world. Uh, so uh, he brushes his teeth. And then the two merchants, Sapasu and Baluka, because they are um, uh, uh, a relative who is now become a god after the death, says, go and uh, 
give food to the Buddha. So they came to Buddha and gave uh, rice cake, uh, rice cake and honey cake, and Buddha was very happy. And then, um, uh, then Buddha, uh, the two brothers in exchange asked for a gift, and Buddha touched his head and gave hair locks. So the tradition means they were they went back to their uh, their village and built up a story with the hair. Um, uh, so this is what you see here. And the four Lokapalas came and offered the bowl because for the didn't have an arm bowl to eat. So if they offered four times different kinds of arm bowls. So Buddha made all of them into one and ate the food that uh, Tapasubaluka gave. So here are the seven weeks depicted everywhere in the, in the temples in Sri Lanka. And then here the Vivihara, you can see starting from here, first week, second week, third week, walking, fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, and the seventh week. And uh, here the Muchalinda has no multiple hoods, but only single hood. And then uh, Tapasubaluka bringing the food and the Lokapalas, four guardian goes uh, bringing the, chat, uh, the, uh, the balls. And then um, uh, we have here, um, uh, Follow Papalas, and then Indra, the Sakka, with water and the teeth cleanser. So this is very clear. This is something that we don't see in any form of Indian art. And then uh, the, I mean, of course, the, uh, the story continues here. Yeah, so the Follow Papalas, and this is from Gangarama. Uh, uh, two uh, merchants come and offer the food, and the Lokapalas give in. And then uh, in his eighth description, Nidhanakatha says, but the perfectly enlightened one rose up thence and returned to the shepherd's drink of the tree and sat down at his uh, foot. And no sooner was he seated there, considering the depth of the doctrine which he had gained there, than uh, there arose in his mind a doubt. That means this doctrine will not be understood by ordinary people. So the gods came and said, Please change your decision, President One. Please preach people. So um, uh, Buddha accepted to preach. So here you can see Brahma, uh, sorry, Brahma here and Indra here, uh, uh, pleading the Buddha to preach. Uh, so the same scene you can see here on his way to uh, to Sarnath, he met a Brahma, he met a person called uh, Upaka. Uh, sorry, uh, it's a disciple of Ajiva can have a conversation. And he went to see the five mendicants with whom he had a discussion, and then comes the first sermon. So the Sarnath is called in Pali text, Isipatana Rama. So the Dharma Deshana, I mean the first sermon, he preached. It's very clear in the Dhanagata. Not only he preached the five mendicants, but also he preached the gods. So this is what you see in the Dhanagata and also in Kandyan paintings. And this is one of the most beautiful paintings of this episode. Where you can see Buddha in the middle, and then Brahma and Indra and the five mendicants. Here is the Brahma, and here are the five mendicants already shown as the Buddhist monks. Same thing in Kurunagara, you have the five mendicants and the gods. Uh, and this is from uh, um, uh, Mirisa Temple, where you have the five mendicants. And then next to important even Buddha's life, four weeks after his perfect retirement, was the first sermon or the turning of the wheel. So this is what Lalpin is saying. It says he turned the wheel, what you call the Dhamma Chakra. In, in Gandharan art, he turns the wheel. Again, you can see. But in, uh, in Pali text, it doesn't say he turned the wheel. So it's always, always with Um And then according to the resources, uh, the tweet, I mean, um, I, I don't think I have much time, so I will go a little fast. It says, for example, in Nidhanakata, he performed the uh, twin miracle three times. And in Sri Lankan Nath, I have never seen so far, these miracles are performed, especially one in Sravasti. But if you go to Gandhara Nath, you can see that means uh, uh, fire, sorry, water coming from the feet, fire from the shoulders. And he was walking up in a gallery, uh, like here in Sanji, you can see Buddha is not depicted in human form, but you can see the treasure cluster. So water and the um, water and the fire. Um, uh, so and also we don't see in Sri Lanka the story of uh, Janapada Kalyani and the Nanda, the Buddha's kissing. Uh, Buddha went on the wedding day and left the ball and Nanda followed him and he converted him into Buddhism. 
that story we don't see in Sri Lanka, but you see plenty in Gandhara Nath. Um, in Gandhara Nath, we see the Nalagiri, the, uh, the taming of Nalagiri, who was provoked by Devadatta, giving him a lot of alcohol to drink. Now, for example, this one is from Andrade. You can see uh, Nalagiri king people, and people are shouting with fear. And when the Nalagiri sees the Buddha, he collapses and weathers it. The only place where in among the, uh, of course, in modern temples, you can see this. But in Gangarama, you can see how Devadatta convinced the man to give him to uh, give the elephant to drink. People got afraid, and he comes killing people and Buddha in front of Buddha. He was dead. Um, for example, uh, the episodes like uh, the visit of Indra at the Indra Sala cave in Kandyan paintings, we don't see that. But the only painting that we have of that event is of the eighth century painting. Of course, this is a um, uh, done by a British painter where yeah, you can see Indra discussing with the Buddha. It is not in, in Kandyan paintings. Uh, in the, the descent of the Buddha is depicted, but not the story of Uttpalavarna, Vikshuni, who became a Chakravarti and converted herself into a woman and a, a man and a woman. You can see this here, but the Uttpalavarna is not depicted. Only place in the Kandyan period that you can see is in the cave number four. And also here you can see Buddha preaching to the gods, but there is no a story of the three ladders made by, I mean, uh, Buddha descended with Brahma and Indra. Um, and, uh, and again here. And then uh, uh, we come to Mahaparinirvana. Uh, the, you have the scenes in the Kandyan period, uh, Buddha's Parinirvana, uh, the monks, and then of course, it's almost like a modern uh, way of uh, Cremating the, the, the chief monks of all the Nikayas in uh, Sri Lanka, where yeah, you can see that, but it is not comparable with what you see in Andhrad, sorry, in uh, Gandharana, which I showed you. People are lamenting, they are crying. Buddha said, Don't cry, there is no need to cry. Uh, uh, but here, of course, with the Greek inspiration, they all cry, um, uh, including Vajrapani. And then, of course, the cremation you can see here. And also in Dhammul Raja Mahavihara, the, between the two trees, uh, Buddha passed away and he was cremated. And this is in Gandharana. Cremation has a special place and also the distribution of relics. And then, like in um, uh, Sanskrit text, his relics were distributed and uh, the stupas were erected, his stupas. Just to show you the continuation of the tradition, I saw this about two years ago um, in a modern temple in Sri Lanka, and the painter follows the same tradition. So this is the bird. What he did is he takes the curtain out, which covered the bird scene, and then Buddha start uh, future Buddha Bodhisattva start walking on the uh, lotus flower, and you can see Brahma here. And here is the moment that he collapses after six years of uh, penance and mortification. And here is the offering of Sujata. And these paintings are just sketches, they are not finished. Just to show you the tradition continues in Sri Lanka. And this is of course the sixth week with the Mochalinda and then the first sermon. So uh, to finish, to give me another three, uh, three seconds, um, I showed you there is a difference between the Sanskrit and the Pali text and uh, uh, to conclude it, I selected this one, which will never, you will never see uh, in Gandhara to Andhra, because it is only mentioned in the chronicle, uh, Deepavamsa and the Mahavamsa. Uh, when, before Buddha passed away, he asked Brahma Sakka to come, Indra to come, and said, go to Sri Lanka and protect that island, because the Buddhism will prevail in that island. So this is in the chronicle, I can't do that. So you have the legend here. Buddha is seated. So here is Sakradeva and Vanse Bharatala Vadadeva. So handing over the responsibility of Sasana to both Sakra. And then again, Sakra in the ghost go, go to, uh, to see uh, Utpadavanna. So uh, God Sakra handing over the responsibility of Sri Lanka to, to God um, Utpadavanna or Upulvan. So this episode uh, is in the, um, in the Sri Lankan chronicle. At that time, when the Sam Buddha, highest of men, attained Paramitvana, that son of uh, uh, Siyabao, 
the Prince called Vijay, having left the land for Jambu Dweeper, led into Lanka Dweeper. It had been foretold by the most excellent Buddha that that prince one day would be the king. The teacher at that time had addressed the Sakra, the chief of the ghost, do not lick the Koshya, the care of Lanka Dweeper, meaning Sri Lanka. Sudhampati, uh, uh, the king of gods, having heard that the Sambuddha's command committed to Uppalavanna, a local god, the business of guarding the island. Having heard the command of Saka, that powerful uh, Devaputta with his attendant demons kept guard over the island. So this is something that you will never see in other forms of Indian art. So to conclude, I have attempted to demonstrate that the artists of Kandyan period were strongly inspired by the Dharakata uh, in visually retelling the life story of Gautama Buddha. There are significant differences between the Sanskrit texts that strongly inspired the uh, Gandhara Nag and the Pali texts that were the foundation of Sri Lankan paintings. A critical analysis of the text and the methodological approach, uh, 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 approach to iconographies allow us to understand the beauty and vivacity of the Kandyan period murals in Sri Lanka. Uh, then I wish to thank uh, Dr. Senda Desanayak, a former director of the archaeology, and the present director of the archaeology of Romantunga, and Dr. Nadisha Munawatan, with whom I'm writing this book, and my two colleagues, um, Edward Bopayarachi and Nadit Bopayarachi, for helping me with the photographs. So thank you very much. So uh, we are very thankful to have Professor Bopayarachi as our guest speaker and have Tony Cotton as our sponsor for the lecture series. I'll now pass over to Dr. Che for us to have a final note. Hello, Professor Osmo <laughs> and everyone. Uh, thank, thank all of your participation and also for Professor Osmo. Um, you are, uh, this, is, th this week uh, is really very wonderful. We have your two lecture, uh, two wonderful lecture, especially uh, for the Gandhara and also for today's topic. Uh, I think today's topic is also very, very important for all the students, uh, for their beginners to learn Buddhist art, because to understand the life of the Buddha in Buddhist art, it is the first lesson. Okay, thank you very much for the very, very wonderful uh, uh, lecture for this, this week. Thank you very much.